The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Loaded to the Tuesday, September 17th edition of Talking Heads. Your boy, Naughty and your company, right up until 6 p.m. on this Tuesday edition. And uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you had a, had a good day so far. A little wet on the outside, so please proceed with caution and care as you go to and fro. All right? And like I said, uh, we got lots to talk about because today is Tuesday. As you know, each and every Tuesday, awesome supplement in the Guardian Courtesy of the Grand Bahama News, you get caught up with everything uh, that's going on in Grand Bahama each and every Tuesday right here uh, at The Guardian, courtesy of the Grand Bahama News. So we'll be talking to Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper on the flip side of the break as we do each and every Tuesday, getting caught up with all things in Grand Bahama with the Freeport Report. And of course, if you want to chime in, phone lines will be open. Here's how you chime in. Brought to you by BTC. Text lines powered by BTC, 422-GR96, that's 422-4796. Phone lines open in New Providence, 323-6232, 325-4316, Toll free in anyone in the family island, 242-300-5720, 5720 BTC Flow Channel 612, Cable Channel 969, and of course, stream us live, take us wherever you want to go, guardiantalkradio.com. That's guardiantalkradio.com. That's how you get it in, that's how you get it on for fresh news, smart talk, all day, right here at Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Now, before we get to, to Grand Bahama, got to big up all the sponsors, couldn't do it without them. You know who I'm talking about, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Eddie Minnis Live, ESC Distributors Limited. Fight for Paradise, Fine Threads, Joker's Wild Comedy Club, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Print Masters, and Tropical Gyros. And don't forget, you know, I like to keep you in the know, get you where you want to go. And if your Japanese import vehicle no longer is able to listen to radio news, talk, and music content on Guardian Radio, then you've got to hit up the hit spot. That's right, the hit spot is offering a $79.99 special, that included. That includes your band extender equipment and installation during the month of September. Mention this ad for a discounted rate. All right? So you go in and say, listen, I heard it on Guardian Radio. I heard it on Talking Ads. Boom, they're going to get you the $79.99 special. That included. That's your band extender equipment and installation in the month of September only. So if you're, you know, Japanese vehicles, radio is on the kaputs, then you need to hit up the hit spot and get yourself hooked up with that $79.99 Band extender equipment and, insta- uh, and installation, all included, $79.99 special. All right? You don't want to miss out on that. Now that we got that out of the way, because like I said, I like to keep you in the know, get you where you want to go. We will be going out to Ground Bahama. But before we get there, got to check out the, the headlines, especially the ones affecting it's New Providence. For headliners. Everything that's making headlines in the 242. Brought to you by the Fine Threads. And here's what's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian News and Views that matter since 1844. All brought to you, of course, by Fine Threads. Government to raise fuel margins. PM, increase will be manageable. Prime Minister Fred Brave Davis said last night the government has reached an agreement with petroleum retailers to increase their margins, 
Davis said the retailers will get a 25 percent, oh, I'm sorry, a 20, 25 cent increase on their gas margins and a 15 cent increase on their diesel margins. Members of the Bahamas Petroleum Retailers Association, the BPRA, have been agitating for an increase for more than a year and have repeatedly said that their backs are against the wall. The association planned to have a protest in front of Parliament tomorrow. Davis said he's sympathetic to the plight of the retailers and believes that now is the time for an increase. We are satisfied ourselves now that there could be movement, and today we settled the issue that they had. Davis said while a guest on the ZNS TV show, The Rundown, with host Clint Watson. This has been ongoing. The retailers were well aware of the challenges that we're having and, they were, and, and that they were having. I was sympathetic to them. About a year and a half ago, we did make an in initiative to assist them, which we did, and for which they were grateful. We promised to get back to them in this matter. We finally got a resolve, and the time is right for us to do what we're doing because it won't have that kind of negative impact on the behavior. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get to A5, but just continue now. Negative impact where? No, 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 no. Hold on. It's for A4, okay, A5. Okay, let's, ah, uh, here we go. It wouldn't have an impact on Bahamian people. It would have had, had we done it sooner. Wait a minute. Gas. Rubus 545. SO 535. Shell 560. Now you can put a little more on top of that. I don't, Mr. Producer, you can deal with them prices, honestly. I mean, I mean, come on now. Come on now, Mr. PM. I got BS on that one. Government to sign heads of agreement with Bahama for a new 400 room hotel. And coroner issues summonses to 13 officers involved in fatal shootings. Wow. And on that note, we will get to the break. And on the flip side of the break, we will get down to uh, Grand Bahama, the buzz with John Shoes. We'll see what's buzzing in Grand Bahama. We check the text lines real quick. Why tell them free up my boy P. Diddy? They trying to keep a no. Anyway, you go tell them yourself. Tell them you want you want you want make sure your boy Diddy straight yourself. No deal. Yeah. Thank you very much. But we can talk about that on the flip side of the break, you know, at some point. Or if not, tomorrow we open up the line. Yeah, we can chop it up on that, because that look like that's the new soap opera in the U.S. Anywho, anyhow, the Tuesday, September 17th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, -day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org. Slash Caribbean. Why can't treat day be every day? Get the new KFC Value Box for only $9.95. Packed with one piece of your favorite fried chicken, cheesy mashed potatoes, three 100% real white meat nuggets, a buttery biscuit, a delicious dessert biscuit, and an ice cold 16 ounce soda. Name a crunchier deal. You can't. Order your new favorite deal online with Messenger or WhatsApp Hi to 557 3663 to start your KFC order today. KFC knows value, and it's finger-licking good. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You're listening. Listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. 
Oh, oh, only on Guardian Radio. 96.9 FM. It's time for the buzz. What are you buzzing on? Brought to you by John Shoes. We're back at you on the Tuesday, September 17th edition of Talking Heads. Good morning, Northern Union Company, right up until 6 p.m. Let's get down to Grand Bahama. And let's check in with Sarah Kirkby, as you know, each and every Tuesday. Great supplement in The Guardian, courtesy of the Grand Bahama News. Get you all caught up with everything Grand Bahama. Appreciate Sarah being here, too. Right, right off the plane, straight to, to, to the studio, man. I appreciate that, Sarah. I mean, that's dedication right there. That's right, boy. There you <laughs> go. I have to say I'm a little bit tired, but, but I, I have to say I took the new Western Air flight out when I left the island, took it back, and it was fabulous, so... Kudos to them. It was on time. It was lovely. Great staff and uh, lovely service. So congratulations to Western Air. And so super to have another flight going to Fort Lauderdale from Grand Bahama. There you go. Well, I, I know if it's a flight to, to, to Fort Lauderdale, you will know where it is. We got Darren <laughs> chiming in as well, too. Darren, how are you, man? Good to hear from you, my brother. Hey, Naughty. Hey, Sarah. Welcome back. Uh, Reggio. Hey. Reggio. Doing what I got to do. Hey, it sounds like it's been another exciting week in Grand Bahama. A lot of people going on down there against the power increase. That's the big headline jumping out. Yeah, yeah. and there was, a, yeah, so, uh, there was also a, a co- uh, article today that you guys should look at in, your, um, in, the, in the media about uh, what the CEO of the Dave McGregor said about it. So uh, it's a lot going on. But this was um, another protest. They were... They were protesting against the person who, you know, obviously makes a decision, which is the Port Authority as a regulator. Of course, that's still being contested by the government um, on that issue. And um, so a lot of things going on with that. And But there's a lot of things that uh, this other article said that we have to pay attention to. It's critical mass. And it really means that our critical mass has to increase in Grand Bahama. And that means we need to have uh, more things coming in like Carnival and an airport, and I went through the airport today, and like, it was so frustrating going through there. It was lovely to fly home, but it was, it's just a shame because what we're used to, it's just, it's not the same. I feel sorry for the people who have to work. I mean, they're in air-conditioned buildings, and they've expanded a little bit, and the ramp's a lot nicer, and the luggage is finally in a sort of, at least slightly better condition with cover, but, you know, we still don't have conveyor belts. We still don't have a decent airport, and this is something we need to also get our hotels back up to par and business going. It's something that just has to happen. Well, I think, you know, all is intertwined now at this stage. Yeah. All of these, yeah. all of it's, these things are, are meeting at, at, like a crux in the road. So you gotta, you know, you gotta figure out how you're going to move on down the road together. You can't block it up anymore. At some point, you know, the voice of reason, some planning needs to, you know, to, to be put out there. And, and obviously, you know, I, I hope it all pans out for Grand Bahama because now we need to get the hotel sold. We need that airport fixed. Yeah, we really do. It really. Needs have, to, have we decided to we're cons- duct taping Lego in crazy? <laughs> what are we doing with, with with the structure down there in Grand Bahama? It's um, as far as we understand, it's on pause right now as they're trying to figure a couple things out. We're not getting mm-hmm. updates, which I'd love to have a full proper update. Um, really, what we know is that they're in, they're looking at for container or storage area i think darren knows a little he might know a little bit more do you know any what the clear update is for this I, darren at all i i just know the same thing that's in the public and the and the media the fact that they will be using it um for some oh god some um uh, courier or freight um, hub um and yeah, the the demo the demo has been put on a halt. Uh, no construction has been, uh, no not, no action has been been carrying on there for the past uh, two weeks. Um, nothing on the the uh, design of the airport, the layout of the airport, what's going to happen with the airport. Not, nothing nothing to to date as relates to that. Um, you know, but I just want to be able to say this, Naughty, that this particular administration, three years later. Um, should have been based upon what they would have come, came into office um, and promising they should have been ground, I mean, they should have been this new international airport. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll wait for later on down in the, music, in the show to talk more about the three year, the success of the three years in office. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. So, so I mean, probably could help me better. 
<laughs> well, let's, uh, let's keep the headlines moving. I see Celebration okay. Key launched an aggressive employment search. I mean, it seems like they're looking yeah. to employ ground behaviors now. Yeah. Celebration yeah, so Key launches an aggressive employment uh, search. Now, where, what kind of positions? Are these key positions? Are, are these everyday positions? Are these one-off? Or what's these going on? These are everyday. These are food and beverage. I believe they're working at, on the grounds themselves, you know, because they've got to be ready to have everybody in place for the start of the new year. You know, with with four ships sometimes coming in a day, it's a lot of people. I, and I've just been on a vacation on a cruise ship, and I've seen when five ships are in town, you got to hustle and, and get everybody ready. So these are, you know, these are, I presume, all a variety of jobs. I read through the article. There are people there bright and early in the morning, and then they're also going to other islands. You can go and find out everything you want to on the Celebration Key website. They keep referencing that all the time. And so you want to go there to find out. And, and you know, what I really like is they're really uh, pushing for Grand Bahamians who, you know, have left the island to come home and work, which I think a lot of people want to come and do. And so they're looking for work. So this is a, a really big opportunity for everybody. And I hope it pans out for a lot of our people. And I also think that their act together now to start doing more tours. They're pushing it through the Port Authority training, and they talk about it with Celebration Key, but you know, being being just been on holiday and taking some of these tours, if any of you have a look at Viator or have been on cruises, there are great opportunities out there for young kids, you know, to go out and make some money by setting up some great tour companies. And as I keep pushing um, my son and everybody I know, there's also great loans out there for kids to get young people coming home to start these businesses. And I really encourage them to do so. You know, you've got, you could do cooking classes, you could do touring East End, you could do sailing, you could do picking you up for a boat ride, taking you fishing. There's all these opportunities that people are, you know, people who have got a good mindset can get going and really build a business. This is a huge opportunity for them. Darren, you have anything um, to add on the, on the employment uh, search by Celebration Key? We got down or did Darren drop? Uh, he's on mute, so he I might think he maybe might be doing All something. Right. <laughs> so, that, so yeah, let's maybe get they to, wafted on too long. Let's get to the <laughs> to the headline real quick. Um, to the next okay. one. Ferguson retires a legacy of leadership and service, and obviously referring to uh, after twenty five years, Merson uh, Ferguson, executive director of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce, retired on September thirteenth. Yeah, she's a powerhouse. She's an amazing lady. She's also so super, 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 super positive and supports everybody. Uh, she's just well-loved by the community. Good for her. And she just, just this is a beautiful, lovely lady. And I'm so pleased that she's, re- you know, for good for her for retiring, enjoying the rest of her life, going to have fun with her beautiful children and grandchildren. Um, mm-hmm. But she's been the power force really keeping the chamber together. I can't remember how many. 24 she's board of directors and 15 day. presidents. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. She's just a character, and she's just a just one of those super people that you need to know in the, in the island. She will keep an eye on you and take care of you. And as a person who started in my business, she always supported me. So a huge shout out to Mercent. She's amazing. You got yes, down yes. back? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I do apologize, but it's just been one of those days. And there are some new videos out there with me, and I'm just learning of them. You know, so the PLP troll is full of. In full effect, but it doesn't. doesn't hey, dog okay. don't park, a bark at park car, man. Dog don't bark at park car, correct. You see what I'm saying? If you have no, if you don't have any haters or you don't have any trust, you really ain't saying nothing. You know what I mean? It's, absolutely, absolutely. So you're right. doing something right. Yeah, exactly. And he, and he is. And if you care about this island, that's what you have to do. You have to speak up. Can't just let correct. things happen. So I'm, pr- I'm proud of Darren. <laughs> Nadi, you know, um, um, I want to touch on Merson. Merson has been a staple in our community, in our business community. Um, one of the most humblest, sternest, but knowledgeable human being um, for the chamber and for businesses. And she is going to greatly be missed uh, yeah. by so many um, that have had the opportunity for the past 25 years to work along with her. Um, I do hope and pray that the chamber would have replaced her with something. And that she would pass on 
uh, her touch uh, to the best of her ability. If that's a mute, Don, you, you muted yourself again. Sorry. No. <laughs> I think Darren's tired. Sure. Yeah, what, what's happening now is the video is now going viral, and so all of those concerns and family members, you know, are just coming in. <laughs> right. So, um, but yeah, Merson is going to be greatly missed. Not in yeah. the PLP has celebrated three years anniversary, and I'm so eager to just talk about it. I've not had the opportunity. I'm going to let you get to that right now. I just going to let Sarah uh, wrap up, and you know, the, I'll wrap up really quick. So, one of my favorite subjects, as you know, is Wassum, the medical school. Uh, I just have to say they've done a really great job. Please read the story. It's about so many Bahamians that they're offering medical scholarships to. There's some really lovely quotes and stories from local Bahamians that are now on their first year and second year program. So I think that's really fantastic. So I really encourage you to look at that. And then there's also two other stories, one on lighting up residents' lives. It's to do with local government helping people with um, power and energy saving. And then um, A Promise Fulfilled is our Red Cross story. So you want to have a look at that and thanking everybody who's kept that going. As we all know, Red Cross is yet in the islands. So uh, after going through all the hurricanes and everything. So now... Now we've done the good and the bad and the ugly. Let's go to the what's been happening with Darren. <laughs> <laughs> what has been going on in Grand Bahama far and wide, Darren? I mean, what's, what's the latest, you know, especially, you know, what you want to talk about. So the, the floor is yours. Somebody, I've been Bring watching, us up to snuff. I've been watching, I've been watching the PLP uh, three years in office um, anniversary and, I really was going to say something yesterday about the three years, but I really wanted to give them the opportunity to be able to, I guess, uh, to their own horn and talk about their accomplishments and and success. Um, but I realized that this particular administration here in Grand Bahama doesn't have anything that they can actually say that they would have accomplished. They have things that they are working on, but it cannot be it cannot be classified as accomplishments. Um, and, you know, I was I was listening to the minister for Grand Bahama and I realized that our media house here, the the, the government station uh, struggled, uh, whether they agreed or disagreed, but they struggled yesterday for stories um, to be able to talk about the success of its government through years in office. Uh, you have a business owner that has our mall drive just looking absolutely ghetto. Uh, they interviewed him, um, and and all he can say is that this particular administration is the best administration um, for the people of Grand Bahama and doing an excellent job, but really can't tell us what they've done. Nothing. No hotel sold, uh, no airport uh, development project, no layout of the division. Uh, we're still where we are. And and even though, Nori, you and I would agree, probably Sarah would disagree, that even though the Free National Movement uh, 2020, 20, well, it was neglected the people of Grand Bahama. Um, but I have to pause because what the FNM went through in their four years and some in term, um, Dorian, um, another storm on another island, uh, the pandemic, this particular administration doesn't have any record of any disaster in any family island as to date. Uh, and, well when, when we look, <laughs> and when we look at when we look at what they've been able to accomplish um, throughout, uh, it's been, in my personal view, um, a disgrace. You know, they will say, "Oh, we cleaned up what was left undone under the previous administration," um, but lay out for us what has been cleaned up. I've not had the opportunity to, to watch the new launch of the new show that the government have going on on the other station. And I don't plan to to really waste much time in listening to it. Um, but there was nothing significant. It was nothing new. Because if it was something that persons wanted to hear, you would have seen it all over social media and you would have already gotten it throughout the WhatsApp group. So clearly there was nothing new. There was nothing uh, spectacular that was talked about last night. Um, and I'm I, as a grand Bahamian, even though one may say, oh, you're grudging or you feel a certain type of way, I'm extremely disappointed in the fact that, in particular in Grand Bahama, uh, the government school that the FNM left for four years and some not opened, uh, the PLP three years later still haven't opened it. But Darren, okay? uh, in all fairness, you guys got a lawnmower in the deal. 
a sit Good down correct, bad correct. boy lawnmower. I did get a brand new, a brand new lawnmower, and I must always remember that. Correct. Because I, I, I was about to say that they didn't do anything, but they did. Thank you, Naughty. They did purchase. <laughs> the member of parliament did purchase a brand new lawnmower for the people of West Grand Bahama, along with, I mean, out of its constituency allowance. Um, the beautiful grandmama program is still not yet clear on what's going on with it. We've been asking for details as it relates to how many persons are on the program, where they are assigned, what is the, what is the full uh, gist of it. Um, the minister for grandmama said that some was in school, in classes, some were janitors um, in schools, and some were going to be set other places. Uh, so we don't have any clear understanding on beautiful Grand Bahama. But in the Western District, out, outside of the lawnmower being purchased, um, I want to say that I think that there's been the Eight Mile Rock High School gymnasium that would have been renovated. Um, I've had the opportunity to see it. It is beautiful. So they got the lawnmower, they got the, 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 the gym um, renovated, and it's also been, it's also been converted into a, a hurricane shelter. So from what I see that there's a, the standby generator for the uh, gym along with a water system. So no longer will you have to be toting water, but a water, uh, once the generator kicks in, will be able to pump into a tank and they'll be able to have functioning water with power uh, during any disaster. So, so, so again, the lawnmower for West Palm Bahama, the, the gym, and then the long-awaited um, government complex that's still not yet fully functioning because some offices doesn't see the need to be there and also some offices are still trying to get funding for furniture. But however, outside of that, in the Western District, the largest settlement in Grand Bahama doesn't see anything um, outside that. The potholes are still, they were patched, but of course we had a whole dray load of rain. So those patched potholes um, either would have came back or some new potholes would have would have been brought back in Grand Bahama. The only thing we continue to hear is the government talk about is the two million dollars, the two billion dollars in the pipeline, and the Carnival Cruise Port that is set for 2025. Um, and the Cruise Port because the Carnival Cruise Port has been around for some time. Um, the actual announcement of the Carnival it was Cruise it was before COVID. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I went to the launch there um, at the at the Christ the King Auditorium. Okay. The, yeah, whatever. yeah, I was there yeah. when they when they talked about it. Um, walk through the process. We know government, all governments take uh, a long process and take long to get things done. Um, this administration came and they shoveled in the ground <clears throat> and work uh, begun. Um, and now they are on 2025. But what new that can create, like Sarah said, critical mass on the island of Grand Bahama? We have developments and projects that are still not getting the attention that the government should give these projects. If you care about Grand Bahama, three years later, what have this administration seal a deal on that they brought in? None. None. Uh, we see the fighting between government and Port Authority. We see the fighting with uh, uh, Port and, and, and Urca, with Port with Power Company. But nothing significant. Um, even the beautiful Grand Bahama program is not so as significant because what was clean has now grown up. And so I really was hoping to see some things yesterday from the Minister for Grand Bahama and saying what was the accomplishment and what 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 was that. And 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 it hurt my heart to hear them say, we fed people. We 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 we've helped straw vendors with their rent. What opportunity? Because the same straw vendors you helped for the first three months, they're the same straw vendors straw vendors uh, in Port Lakaya now who are still crying to say they are functioning in a ghost town when the island has record numbers of some 3,000, 4,000 cruise passengers they don't have not being open was to, to put some vendors on the boardwalk or to create an avenue where straw vendors, I mean to, um, tourists can have beach access in the Port Lakaya area and at the end of the beach access they can walk in the Port Lakaya and experience some of the shopping um, store that they have. But the government opened the poor, open pop club um, and opened the beach, but you drop them in the front of where the hotel is and don't give them, and pick them right back up from there, but don't give them the opportunity to wander into the Port Lakai area. And so- I think, you, Darren, you've had a very good point there with the Port Lakai. 
area and stuff like that. That's that's that big part about critical mass where I was naughty. It's just that the the people there really need that for to come back. They need that for their job. So this is why, you know, people probably when they tune in they think, Oh, they're talking about those same three things, the hotel, Port Lacayo or or we talk, you know, the airport. But they're so important for us and and you're right, I mean, but it's and this government arguing is just not helping us at all as we try to recover. But and I would love that to go away and for them to work together. But we these this is why these things are so important to us. We need these sorted out. It is very frustrating for you to be a Grand Bahamian, to love your island and to love everything that happens here and to see these successes happening on Bimini and Eleutha with their airports. And I'm like and I'll be honest, I'm like, dude, we had to lose our airport five years ago, and it's still not back. And, you know, it's successive governments. I, I don't know what the FNM had planned for the airport. They had not done it, and I was really hopeful that the PLP government would get this going a little bit faster. It's very frustrating because we need this to be a success for the, for the, for the hotel to come in. And, and, and seeing other islands get these and recovered is very frustrating. And so I don't want everyone to think we're just complaining all the time. We know things are coming and we're, we're happy about it, but it's the frustration of the, of the whole project not feeling like it's rolling together, if that makes some sense when I say that. Yeah, if, if, if there's a, a perceived disconnect, then it's going to be hard to smooth things out. And I think moving forward, everything needs to be on the, on the same plane. The, the, the yeah. field has to be level. Yeah, I mean, you can clean you know, up the know. island all you want. That's not going to make a difference for us. Right now, we need the airport and the hotel sorted out. It's got to get going. And, and that's what I mean. All of those in. things I mentioned earlier, they're yeah. at these crossroads now. They're, they're but, interconnecting. you got to join them up and make sure it, it, it moves down the track. Yeah. Go ahead, Darren. No, I, I, I get, um, I, you know, there is so much stuff that continues to be in this pipeline that we continue to hear about. And, you know, when we hear our prime minister make the statement that he had to come to Grand Bahama to relaunch this or to deal with this or to deal with that, clearly say that, that, you know, you don't have, you don't have the right people in place for the job. Um, and if the prime minister can pay more attention to some of the issues that Grand Bahama faced and can deal with some of the issues in terms of making sure that we do get um, these projects out of the pipeline and granted the approval that's necessary, then we can see a turnaround in Grand Bahama. But the truth be told, but businesses are struggling. Businesses are doing everything that they can to, to keep their doors open um, because they are hoping, um, and they've been hoping for so long, uh, for a better way um, and for opportunities to, be, to become available to them. We are not a group of people who are looking for handouts, for opportunities. We're looking for the island to be to be booming with with, with, with so many opportunities like the Bimini, like the uh, um, Inagua, um, not Inagua, um, Exuma, and like the Nassau. We have we have one of the best infrastructure on Grand Bahama, um, properly laid out and designed city. And we cannot, and when you hear persons like a Darren Cooper saying these things, all of a sudden, I'm now in the pocket of the, of the Port Authority. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just as in the pocket of the Port Authority as the PLP in the FNM. And I ain't getting no campaign fund, so they're more in the pocket than me. But we need opportunities. And we need our government to stop playing Russian roulette with the people and get it done so that we can benefit, so that our people can return. They don't have to be in Nassau, here and all. you from Grand Bahama or some other part of the, 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 the Bahamas, but they can return. Some of these people got homes here. Some of these people got their family here, but have to go abroad and elsewhere because they don't have opportunity here. And it's needed badly. And I think if, if, if we get those certain things in place, i.e. the airport, i.e. the hotel, it's going to interconnect with those other things. And, and tremendous opportunity awaits for Grand Bahama. But how serious is this administration or the current opposition, if they become the next administration, on getting it done? We talk, we talk, we talk, we talk about caring for people and, and, and being concerned. This administration has built two homes in East Grand Bahama after Dorian. 
and they and they were the ones that said that the Free National Movement administration moved slow. Built to home. Three almost three years later, you the Prime Minister come to relaunch forty small home repair in the Western District, not even in the Eastern District. Three years later. Three years later, we watching and seeing footage of the hurricane shelter in Abaco. You all know what happened there. Three years later. And this is the government that said that the previous administration moved too slow. They didn't have the pan- they didn't have a pandemic and they didn't have the hurricanes. They had a smooth three years of an open economy. And we are still talking about the thing. And then they're convinced, want to convince us that it is so important that they, they, that they are given a, a second chance to finish what they didn't finish in the first term. A government that doesn't want to talk to people. A government that only will do an interview, live interview with a selected person. What happens to the rest of the people? Or a government or a prime minister that will will show up on a talk show pre-arranged or pre-recorded uh, or uh, approved questions, but to be the prime minister that answers the questions that the Bahamian people have, legitimate ones. Like why we can't get an advanced tax compliance certificate. Why are people being asked to pay one year advance in license fees, one year, one month in advance in power bills? Why? Why am I paying pay as I go? These are things that people want answers to. And all we get is smart talk from the people who say they care about us. All enough right. is enough. Let's get to the phone lines. We got a couple of calls. Let's, let's get them in. Talking heads. Talking heads. Let's get to the next one. Talking heads. Yes, how you doing? Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Darren. And to you, Naughty Hey, Challenge. what's happening, Sea Island? Yeah. Um, in, you know what? First, let me tell you the story. I don't know if you ever heard the story of the Virgin Bride. After three years, she was uh, still she was married, seeking a divorce. And so her father asked her, why is it that you're seeking a divorce after three years? And this claim of you that you have not consummated the marriage. He said, tell me, daughter, exactly what is happening. She said, Dad, this guy sat on the foot of the bed for three years telling me how good it's going to be. What has happened is that the Progressive Liberal Party continuously want to market to us what it's going to be. They have not executed. And so I'm just perplexed at this $2 billion worth of investment. The Grand Bahama shipyard was for the $600 million was before. Atlantic was before. See, when you have an investor in the country and they see that they have experienced the potential, they've experienced the, the gain they've had, it's natural for them to want to expand. We have to look for new investments. So when you look at the uh, totality of what the Progressive Liberal Party is claiming, and mind you now, I want you to pay very close emphasis. Everything that the Progressive Liberal Party is referenced has occurred in Freeport, not Grand Bahama, in the very people they're fighting with. Six senses, everything. So when you add all those things up, 600 million, 600 million, 250 million, 200 million, the airport they came for 200 million, they counted that, that they haven't started yet. You had almost the $1.9 billion right there. So then, in essence, you're probably looking at less than $100 million in three years. And so, the, what, what is it that the Grand Bahama economy needs? The Grand Bahama economy needs $2.8 million per day just to remain stationary. And we have not had that. But I could tell one thing in ending. I'm not going to keep this long because we're going to, we're going to try to see if we could bear another year of pain before we have the opportunity to purge the Progressive Liberal Party. But I could give them one advice in the, what's going on with the, with the energy company. In case you guys don't know this, right, I've known people with power bills for 275 290 and their power bill went up $5, $10, $15, and they're hit with a 10% fat. I beg the uh, government of the Bahamas. To, to, it's a policy decision. It's not legislation, a policy decision. Just the minister only has to speak it. The prime minister can speak it for us. Change the wording from any light bill under 300 to any for the, to the first 300 dollars on a light bill, 
So at minimum, the individuals on Grand Bahama who do have not experienced any growth will at least save the 10% VAT control over the heat and other different things that change the rate that cost them, you know. And we just, just give an example. Somebody had a bill for 295 Their bill came for 301 So they no longer got the exemption. They now paid $30 and 50 cent VAT added to their bill just because they use $5 more. And so these are the things that can benefit Grand Bahama. So I beg the government of the Bahamas, just make that policy, policy statement tomorrow in, policy, in Parliament that all light bills for the first $300 will be exempted from that. So we could even make it for, what is it, our homeowners. And then we could at least experience that 10% savings for those of us that just slightly edged over the $300. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yal. Yeah, I appreciate your contributions as always. But um, we almost getting to the time when we need to wrap, but... Um, I, I'm looking at the situation, and, and let me get to the text lines because some texts had some some um, points for you and some questions. Um, okay, um, how can this government speak for the people when you do not consult or have any consideration for the people in this country? These politicians are horrible. Um, Let's get back to the phone lines. I see another call coming through. Um, let me get to these other texts. Naughty RPM is a mastermind. He will do what he has to do to avoid bad press. Watson is an example of what not to do in the media. Let's go to the phone lines. Talking heads. Hey, what's happening, Naughty? To you and the guest. Hey, what's happening, bro? I'm concerned about the, the amount of taxes this administrator put on the, on the cost of the demon people over the last three years. Uh, they came in this, into this administration with an agenda that talks to the Yemen people. Uh, and I, I think the Yemen people are suffering. In particular, us and Grand were paying a, a, a heavy cost just to survive throughout the Bahamas. Uh, you know, the government, they, apply, they said they reduced tax, they reduced VAT, but they apply it straight across the board and everything. Uh, I remember under the previous administration, power bills under, I believe, what, uh, 300 KW were, were VAT free. Insurances was VAT free. Medication was VAT free. Bread basket items were VAT free. Uh, you know, it, it, I mean, they just, you know, boat registration has gone up. Uh, business license has gone up. You're now paying for business license in advance before the year even comes in. You know, I mean, even to apply a dog tax now, you know what I mean? We just being taxed left, right, and center, man. They, you know, the, the, they tax and they're, they're trying to tax their way out of uh, out of debt and tax and put it on our backs, like you said. And yeah, and, and you remember what Sir, Sir Winston Churchill said? You know, if your plan is to tax your way out, it's like lifting yourself in a bucket. It's not going to happen. Yeah, but I would have understood if they were taxing their way, trying to tax their way out of debt. And they were putting the money to good use, but you know, all we could see is the problem. No, the, the, there's still got to be more vision than just tax the citizens, regardless of, of what use it's put to. You Let, know, let's uh, get some visionary, know. visionary thoughts and plans that that, that benefit everybody, and, and still put money in the kitty without breaking the, the, the taxpayers' back. Yeah, I, I fully agreed. Fully agreed. You know, uh, and, and 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 on top of that, every I mean, name me one government government agency that's functioning properly. Name me one MP that is functioning properly. You know what I mean? Every government agency ha has an issue, has a problem. You know, school just opened. Many schools ain't got no principals. Uh, many schools still ain't being renovated. You know what I mean? To be charged in, in, in court uh, for, for uh, manslaughter or, or, or something like that. You know what I mean? Immigration is where you put me. Uh, finance the uh, you know the the finance secretary come to work with his boss and loves in his in his in his bike. So I mean, what this what this what this administration doing? My brother, the more things change, the more they stay the same, and in some cases they get worse. And at some point, we as as voters, I think we need to step up and and demand a change moving forward for, for better well, governance because it's well, part of well, our fault because we keep it reelecting the same characters. Over and repeatedly. Well, I think I think we in Grandmama, I think we need to really take a good look in the mirror. And I think in order for something to happen in Grandmama, we need a leader from Grandmama. And I think Mr. Pendard is the perfect person to 
bring grandmama back to where it needs to be. Once grandmama is on, on track, the rest of the family islands is on track. So once you get grandmama to take off, the rest of the islands can automatically take off. And, you know, until you get someone from grandmama who understands grandmama, who understands the grandmama model, who understands the Oxford curriculum, who have businesses here, someone who kids go to school here, until it happens, I don't think you can see a difference. Appreciate the, continue to listen. Appreciate the call, caller. Good points as always. But that's something I've, I've always been amazed at, 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 at the fight that Grand Bahama has, whatever the administration is, to get the really representation and the attention they need. And I've always wondered mm -hmm. why. When you look at the bottom line, Grand Bahama is a major contributor to the, to the bottom line. But I'm going to let you two um, wrap things up. I think we lost Darren, so obviously he had to go and sort out the situation with what's happening with that video. So I hope they're... And we will, well, I'm sure we will hear about that. But, um, yeah, no, you make a very good point there, Nadi. Um, we do need, rep we have representation, but we need, uh, you know, the gentleman said exactly right. We need everything with the Port Authority to, to be moving along and for the government to be working together. We're all trying to make the Bahamas better for everybody, and Grand Bahama is a huge wheel in, in that. And we do treat really uh, largely, especially with, you know, the oil refineries and the um, all the companies, the corporate companies and the industrials that we have here. So we need things to function well. And it just seems that it just doesn't seem to connect. I don't know why. And so we need to make that happen. And I'd like to see it happen in my lifetime. I'd definitely like it to happen for my children, you know, because they love it here. And um, all the kids who, you know, want to make Grand Bahama succeed. So let's make it. We just got to keep pushing and hoping that they will sort this out. We will get this airport. We they are working on this hotel, and, uh, you know, we just hope they can get it done. I d don't want it to wait two years for election. Announce it now. Come on, let's get it going. You know, give us that hope we need here after everything we've been through. Hope is a weapon, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I got, don't want to so. Guess, Go ahead, sorry. I appreciate you, you know, chiming in today, you know, flying in and chiming. I appreciate Diane <laughs> chiming in. Always appreciate your contributions each and every Tuesday, but do it again. Looking forward to another great supplement in the uh, Guardian, courtesy of Grand Bahama News on Tuesday. And I'm uh, chopping it up with you guys next week. So have a great rest of the week in Grand Bahama. And I uh, will do it you. again. And, and, and if I could just say thank you to my lovely staff who let me have a vacation, because they're wonderful. And, and Savannah Kavandri and Shiraz, who worked so hard. And thank you to everyone who supports the paper. Sorry, Ted, throw that out there. There you go. No problem, man. And of course, like I said, <laughs> This week, the term from Grand Bahama, tired of, you know, being sick and tired, you know. So hopefully yes. next week we got a little more <laughs> public effervescent news to report. But that's I believe Grand Bahama, tired of being sick and tired. And the news for tired of being sick and tired. I hear an exuma that, Mr. Prime Minister, people tired of being sick and tired. Just thought I'd throw that out there for you. Appreciate your contributions as always, Sarah and Darren. We'll do it again next week. Mr. Producer, take me to the break. Cuban Willie's numerology report coming up on the flip side. On Brother of course, by the Island Game. Don't touch it. What is life? What is making it? For pieces, they are bright. They tell me if you're rich, you only got to worry about Imagine getting full flavor without your wallet judging you. We're taking value to a newer, crunchier level with our new KFC Snack Box. Packed with one piece of juicy fried chicken, crispy fries, and a buttery biscuit, all for just $5.35. Take a break and snack responsibly with a delicious, affordable KFC Snack Box. Order your new favorite deal online with Messenger or WhatsApp High to 557-3663 to start your KFC order today. KFC knows value, and it's finger licking good. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. 
NASA. Get ready for a night you simply won't want to miss. For the first time in over 40 years, experience an evening with Eddie Minutes live at the Amphitheater Nassau Cruiseport on Saturday, October 5th. Tickets are on sale now. Go to TicketBoxEvents.com or go to the NASA office located in the Jacanoo Museum. Joining Eddie on stage, Fran Chung, Gino D, Ira Stoll, and the higher level band. An evening with Eddie Minutes live at the Amphitheater Nassau Cruiseport, Saturday, October 5th. Get your tickets now. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Feeling lucky? Here's Cuban Willie's numerology report. Brought to you by the Island Game. Hola, buenos dias. It's me, Cuba Willie, and it's Tuesday, and it's time for my numerology report. Brought to you, of course, by the Island Game. And here is the football for you today. 7511. 7511-7511. That's your cuatro pelotas. Very long win with the Island Games. Stay winning, my friend. Play with Island Games. We making dreams come true. Play with Island Games. We paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market. You get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy. And spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games. We put in Bahamian's voice. Guaranteed to play Island Games. We like them mother jokers. We've been here from the start. From the bike to computer. Island Games. We gonna make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Oh, only on Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. They say the sun, and I say the world. But they in some people world, you never shine at all. These rows of flames are catching a fire. Loaded to the Tuesday, September 17th edition of Talking Heads. September flying by. I thought we just started September. Like it was just the first. And now, boom, we got the 17th. September, I have no intention of, of going slow or sticking around. Mm-mm. September up and out. But right now, as we do each and every, you know, 5 o'clock hour, when we slide into the sports, we started off with today in sports history, all brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. And don't forget, tomorrow's Wednesday, happy hour, 5 to 7 at Naughty Johnny's. Well, we the trip out there to the Old Fort Shopping Plaza. Great drink specials, great food specials. Be sure to check them out. On this day, September 17th in sports history, 1920, the American Professional Football Association was formed in Canton, Ohio. It was the precursor to the National Football League. 1920, baseball player to wear a Chicago Cubs uniform. He retired in 1971, known as Mr. Cubs. And wasn't he another one famous uh, for saying it's a great day to play baseball? 1961, the Minnesota Vikings were debuted as the new National Football League team. 1983, Johnny Bench of the Cincinnati Reds retired after 16 years as a catcher. 1983, Carl Yastrzemski of the Boston Red Sox broke Hank Aaron's Major League record for games played when he started his 3,299th game. 1984, Reggie Jackson hit his 500th career home run it was exactly 17 years from the day he hit his first major league home run. In 2004, Barry Bonds of the San Francisco Giants hits his 700th home run. And famous quote of the day, it ain't over until it's over. You know who said that one? Yogi Berra. Yogi. There you go. <laughs> Pearly chimed in as well. I, I knew Pearly was going to chime in on that one. Couldn't resist it. What's going on, Pearly? Right there, man. Right there. Well, we can ask sale now. The 48-hour rule is over. We can talk football, you know, moved on. Everybody started their cut skin. You know, it was like an open know, moment. I know you happy your rival, your, your division rival. Or no, but well, I want to I, I, I send a special shout-out to uh, Coach Marlon Boswick. And I told Marlon I was going to do this today. Forget Facebook. Forget WhatsApp. That's too small. We'll take it to the big platform. Now, he's done a great job coaching over his career. He got plenty, you know. Trophies in the case. Not mad at him at all as a baseball coach. As a football fan, he's a big shego. You understand what I'm saying? A big mouth, Rudy Pooh, shego. Okay? 
all, every point, every time the same squad, my phone blew up, my WhatsApp went up, my Facebook had an update from this guy, Marlon Boswick. Okay? But now, <laughs> who gets Because the Eagles now, stunk. The last laugh. It can't be the last laugh because they're 15 more all right. games to all go. All right. Well, who gets the, the laughing moment now? Me. Well, and guess lost, what? He lost. I lost. So nobody really has a laughing moment. Yeah, because if you spend your night, we get laughing at everybody who lost, trying to rub it in, thinking you're going to yeah. beat the, 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 the Falcons, and they show up and pop you in the mouth. Because that's what but they did know, eventually. They popped him in the mouth. Dare, I, have, I didn't say anything to my friend today. I have a dear friend, Bishop uh, Gregory K. Minnis Sr., who is a huge Philadelphia Eagle fan, and he rub it into me every day. I give him some, too. Day. The Lord will forgive you. You know you know the routine. He's a good old Catholic fellow, man. 18 and marries 14, oxygen condition. You're good to go. But no, I didn't. I saw him today, you know, but I know he was waiting on me to say something, but I met not. I said, I can get him on the show. Bishop, you're not touch and a cut him, too. All of y'all. So you can laugh at me and Pelly when we was down first. Y'all was just last to lose. That's all. And 49ers, y'all in this too. Y'all just letting all us take the heat while y'all ducking low. But y'all got your things too. So nobody's special in this. Not this week. No, all us in the, all us in the losers' my, my lounge. Dear, my dear loving cousin, my dear loving cousin, cousin Venencia is a huge New Orleans Saints fan. So she's on, on, on top of the world right now. And I'll be honest with you. I, I tell you this now and I told you this last week. From what I saw the Saints, they could pop the Eagles in the mouth too. Because the secondary is weak. Yeah, but uh, well, I don't know. We can... Now we got we got lots to talk about when who's in and who's out. But we gotta get to the local scene real quick. But um, you know, let me get to this text. Naughty, I'm not feeling the NFL this season. I know we are already two weeks in, but I'm not feeling it. Maybe things might pick up coming down the playoffs, around the playoffs, but won't be the Christmas holidays and the games become when the Christmas holidays and the games become more meaningful. But I don't see it happening. I hope I'm wrong. In any case, I guess we have to wait until next season when maybe. Not happening. Not happening. Shadur ain't get selected. Not with Dak signing the four-year deal. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Shadur, and he's going to be a number one, maybe a top three, not a leader. Definitely a top five pick. Correct. Tech, the other text to any given Sunday. Agreed. Don't be surprised if, if he ends up in South Beach. Correct. The Mundo. Or New York. Or New York, yeah. Or Carolina. Okay, no, Carolina got the quarterback. Don't worry about them benching him. That's their future. No, I hear it. he's a part of there. I hear that the, the locker rooms quit on him, management's quit on him, the coaching staff's quit on him because he was the, the holdover from the last, you know, coaching staff. Wow. So I'm here in New York's in the market for him. I hear the Rams are in the market for him. Let him mentor behind Stafford. He's got some skill, you know. Before he becomes Trey Lance 2.0, he needs to end up in a good organization where he could just, you know, play caddy for a year, catch yourself. And then go from there. It's yeah, one so. thing to perform in college with some of the best offensive linemen in the nation protecting you. It's another thing to go to the pros like Caleb Williams, where the Bears have tried to put as many good pieces around him to make the transition easier. A lot of the Texans as well with, with, with C.J. Stroud last year and, and holding over into this year. Carolina did nothing to protect this kid. Nothing. They traded everything for him, and obviously, if you give away draft picks and you give away key pieces, you're going to have a situation. If you trade yeah. away your best receiver, who's he going to throw to? If you trade away draft picks in the later rounds, how are you going to build your offensive line to protect him? And your line was porous to begin with. Yeah, you're correct. So he got <laughs> baptism under fire, and that's not easy for certain people. That's not. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But can, do I think? With, the, with a little bit of more maturation in the league, right quarterback coach, right team, right situation, yeah. I would draw I would adopt him simply as insurance. Simply as insurance. You get a number one pick off the quote unquote scrap heap because Carolina don't know no better. You let him learn the system behind Tua as much as he can. God forbid something happens to Tua, he can't continue. Full off season in the program, a full training camp, and a full preseason. You you got yourself a quarterback. You protect him long That's enough, he's gonna find Waddle. He's gonna find Tyreek Hill, and he'll find the tight end. That's the thought. So you'll see. I I don't think the book is closed on Bryce Young, but it, it definitely is closed in in Carolina on him. When you got Adam yeah. Schefter reporting that, that they're done with him, well, it's pretty much pretty much that's a wrap. Yeah, it's 
uh, yeah, Shefty, if Shefty yeah, got it, man, listen here, Shefty, that's pretty yeah, much that's gospel. Deal, yeah. deal yeah. So we got to keep an eye out on it. I, I think it's it's another bad situation though, where teams go all in to get these quarterbacks, and then they have zero patience developing them. And there's still a jump you between you college and the pros. You got to see. Right now, I'm glad it's a copycat lead because everybody got to take a book out of the out of the page, out of the page of the Bears and do what the Bears did. The Bears, yeah, they made they made a draft for a straight quarterback, but they didn't put things around. They realized what happened. They used him, traded him to get some picks, and they went ahead and they picked up, they drafted, and they signed and some good veterans, some good, and they have a really nice unit. It ain't complete yet, not complete yet, but they have a pretty good unit. That can help this kid grow. And the Bears will be really good quicker than you think. I think so, too. I think the Bears quicker will be. Think. They might be a year away. The Bears can catch them and, and their window can close faster than they think. Yep, that could, that could very well be. Let's get to the phone lines real quick. Talking heads. Yeah, brothers. Yeah, brothers. Naughty and Pearly. What's going on, Muff? Muff. Yeah, but... Hey, nice hey, hey, uh, Naughty, no hold on, Ma, Ma, yeah. hold on, Naughty. Satan, uh, Satan, man on the phone got boy day this week. Oh, oh what day? Yeah, Not today, though. And I, I did it Friday. And I, oh, I Friday. Friday. Yeah, 55, 55 Friday. And yeah, big splash by those. Big splash right there by those starting from 2 o'clock. Okay, Naughty, okay. Naughty, uh, I bring in you and MJ and Chris Plate up there in the studio. That sound like a plan. Friday around 4 o'clock, 4.15 or so. That sound like a plan, man. We'll chop it yes. up. And the results and all of that, all the... Man, uh, that sound like a plan. That sound like a plan, brother. All the stuff. Come on down, by day boy. Yeah, okay, yeah, on, on, on Friday. But you probably could be straight. You can pick up the present. I know he didn't talk to you about it. Okay. Now, Bryce Young. Yeah, man, he's looking bad for a number one draft. Like, he's been one game in his career. So far, in two years. One game. That nah, ain't looking too good. He ain't looking too good while he's carrying on in college. Yeah, and, but uh, look, look who we had around him in college, my brother. That's true. That's true. Well, he ain't looking good with the Pontus. <coughs> no. Uh, he ain't looking good with the uh, um, Yeah, my one game in two years. So Aaron Rodgers <laughs> looking dead in him, man. Well, Rodgers looking dead in him now. Yeah, so, yeah, well, man, yeah, who they talk about? Thing. Yeah. You gotta understand hey. one thing. Yeah. Listen hey, to me that's carefully. In, in All school, the big teams get beat this weekend, eh? All the big teams. Yeah, us. You will start with us. Well, Naughty Dumb is the only big uh, team <laughs> within, would get beat within a big team. Yeah, the Cowboys. Oh, see, you got the you got Naughty hang up on you again. <laughs> you no, man. You finger all this on that trigger. Yeah, I'm not the 40 to more. But the Eagles let me down last night. The Eagles let me what type of defense that is in that many, that no, many, they, they, they right? let you down. Shaco, uh, Barkley let you down. Yeah, him too. Him too. Let's catch, catch, catch the ball, the ball. Let's catch the down. ball. The game was over. The game was over, man. But, uh, Cousins with that drive, that last drive and the two-minute drill, man, no pressure at all. Drive the ball straight down. Touchdown. I, I, Up by one I point. Would have, I would have still gone for it on fourth and three. Even if I failed, you'd have had them pin inside the five yard line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. And and uh it's too full, man, in the last eighty five seven man, seconds, man. Saquon Barkley do. Pressure. And Saquon Barkley do. Pressure. Hurts, hurts, that one that one ain't hurts. That one ain't hurts. That's pressure. Uh fifteen more yards without trying to interception. They'd have been in the field goal because the kicker got a good leg. He could have probably kick a 60 out of. If the left tackle did protect him, he wouldn't have that problem. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. No, they so disappointed, man. Tackle, man, the left tackle, they look bad, though, because they scored three points in problem. the first half. They take so long to score. They look so bad in the first half. Uh, listen, I'm surprised that Atlanta, because they've been hung over for the last two years when Arthur Smith was their coach. They, they were just doing full offensively. And, 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 and now... They they look like they woke up at halftime. They look like they they going a different route. They they trying to get a little Cousins. more excited and using the pieces that they have. <laughs> that yeah, leg of Cousins is getting loose now. Hey, cousins, they cousins, loose. cousins, he's what? a comeback man, boy. From Washington time and things like that, boy. That, hey, that man could come back in two million two minutes drill, boy. One thing with Cousins, he could handle that. But uh, yeah, man. Hey, but uh, the, the 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 quarterback from Baltimore, 
But I remember when he's falling in for Lamar Jackson, man. Yeah, he played in sort of solid. High law or hard law. Yeah, the black me, quarterback, man. Right? You know, but they came with Thompson against the Bimini boy Sunday. Uh, boy, he looked good. Boy, Gino said, look good. Leg and arm look good, boy, with Seattle boy. So, but the uh, Tyler Thompson no, will be in problems with him Sunday. I don't know if he can look good. But I know he don't start high I'd rather high I, I think I think Seattle wins that game on Sunday. If they're a healthier team going in, they're they, they, they going win. Course. Yeah. Of course, man. You ain't see him in the preseason. You see, he didn't look like nothing. Now, everyone talking about that game, that playoff game against the Bills, he almost win the game and this and that and all that. Almost ain't good enough. You got to win the game, not almost win the game. You can't get to the Super Bowl almost winning the game. You know? Yeah, Close man. But it was a good game last night, but... Yeah, I gotta let y'all know, but what's more, what's going on Friday? But you and MJ straight Friday, and Brady y'all straight Friday. All yeah, right, man. To the picks, let me let someone else get in. Yeah, brother, sweetly. All right, thank you. What, one of the things you have to understand <laughs> about football in high school, you have a high school football team, and you may have one, two superstar players on that game. The rest of the kids are pretty average, maybe good players and all that. In college, you're gonna have a bunch of good players. And you're gonna have some. Then you're gonna have several superstar fastball players. But when you get to pros, that's all the best players of every team. So that's the very fast ones. That's the superstar. All you get in the pros, and don't worry about teams losing and not having a good. That don't mean they're not good football players. That just means they couldn't get their chemistry right, they ain't get the right coaching, whatever. They ain't in the right system. But they all got enough talent to make it to the NFL. The fact that they get the talent to make it to the NFL makes them great players. So, so when you, when you, like Caleb Williams, they said Caleb Williams tried to, uh, the, the pocket collapse and break a break. And in college, he might have boys that for 40 yards. In the pros, that was four. Right. Everybody just as athletic as you. It ain't like you, it ain't like you get that big doofus 300 pound dude playing left tackle for you in high school. And that's all he can, he'll never play in college or never play in the pros again. No, you got that stud. Defensive, le- the, the stud left and who played in high school, college, and pros. So that's the difference. That is the difference right there. All right, let's get back to the phone lines. Talking heads. What's up? What's up, Lordy? Bully, what's up, man? How you hey, what's going what's on, St. Pete? What's up, Peter? Hey, hey, check it out. I had to put on the APB for them Philly fans to, this morning. You know, like Sunday, boy, they, was, they, was, they blow up my <laughs> table. Now they, they, they're they quiet. They're quiet. I mean, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas get a, a whooping right, but them one point, them them one point games, man. Boy, they, I, I think they hurt more than, than anything, boy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is. Any given Sunday or Monday, man. Any given Sunday. That that you know, was the week. Know. That was the week from hell last week in the NFL. All kind of mid. I think twelve underdogs won outright or covered. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't understand hey. that text though. Said he, he didn't feel in the NFL. That's exciting. Hey, check this out. Years ago. You remember, you remember when the Bucks won their first Super Bowl, right? When they, when they played in Philly, right? When they won the NFC and in Philly, when they went to the first Super Bowl? Right. Man, those Philly fans, they are the nastiest fans. Man, look here. They put batteries, they wrap it up in snow. In the snowballs and brace you with the snowballs, yeah. Man, let me tell you, if you go up there with, with, with that opposing jersey, a team jersey, you better take that shit. You better take that off when you leave that stadium. They have a jail in the stadium, brother. They have a jail in the stadium. I'm telling you, they some nice stuff. A city of brotherly love. You know love up there, boy. If you ain't, if you ain't a Philly fan of you, man, they... they, they I, the I had the unfortunate uh, um, 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 pleasure of being stuck in the airport on an overlay for five or six hours, man. It was horrible, man. Man, look, they love a city of brotherly love. Hey, hey, you know brotherly love up there, boy. I'm telling you. you, hey, you hey, if you go in the bathroom... Man, if you drunk, they, they, they pee all over them guys. He drunk, man, Philly fans, they, they're the worst fans in the world. I hate them. I hate them in the past. They tell all the only thing good in Philly is a cheesesteak sandwich. That's about it. Yes. I, and, and you can I, get yeah, that anywhere now. Hey, hey, check it out. If, if you want to get a Philly fan, man, tell them they, they tell them they, they, they New York, New York, tell them they stole the recipe from New York. Or they, they, they want to fight you, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, tell me how violent they are, so you want me to tell them that so they just won't fight me? <laughs> what kind of rationale is that, St. Peter's? Boy, look at you just, just tell them they saw the rest of me from, 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 from New York. Boy, they would, they would, they would cut, you, they cut you so high, boy. <laughs> but it is what it is, man. 
Hey, yo, 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 but hey, yeah. I'm not if you listen. Hey, I tell Mo, if you listen next to me, I play too now. <laughs> I hear that. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. It's not like you want some macaroni and peas and rice. Man, come on, man. Have your Felix me a plate, man. You need to come on the plane, and that's what you need. Come get you some for real. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming home in December, man. You know to watch the real Wally boys, man. Man, then you, if they can figure that out, you need to come on the show with me and Pearly man when, when you get on. All right, make a cameo. Come the world famous Wally boys. All right. Man? Well, we got to get to the break. St. Pete, always good to hear from you, man. Enjoy that traffic on the bridge in Tampa. All right, buddy, let's get to this break. Flip side of the break. You know, we'll, we'll be getting back and uh, we'll talk some more who's in and who's out. We'll talk some more NFL. We'll get our picks lined up. And then we got a final 15 today. We got uh, Nick Wright. All right. And Bruce Sard taking us home today. And uh, I'll be here. And, and listen, was it Sirianni that cost the Eagles last night, or was Saquon? Was it Saquon? I think it was a bad call. I, I don't know why he was. Throwing. I mean, it was it was a good call. If, if it worked, it would have been a great call. But the, the best call is you take you give Saquon that ball and let him go up the middle, off the right, uh, off tackle. Well, they lost. So to me, it was the right call. <laughs> you know, and then you know, if he had caught it, you know, and you but Saquon. He, take one lead the NFL in drop balls in the last couple of years. And they still want to give him all that money. He got concrete hands. He like Roberto Duran. Hands of stone. You give him what he comes to do. You give him the rock and let him barrel his way through that, you know. That, get the it's said and that's that. you nothing more, you nothing less. You that, four down, that was four down territory. Two runs. You would have made the first down. Touch, touch, push, push, whatever you call it. Touch, push. Yeah, come on, man. They, 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 all right. Oh, boy. We get to the break, flip side of the break. We'll chop it up some more. Keep it right where you got it. The Tuesday, September 10th, I mean September 17th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. KFC Bucket Meals, now with larger, large sides. Make your wallet happier with a KFC Family Bucket featuring eight pieces of juicy chicken, family fries, and four biscuits that feeds four. A KFC Deluxe Bucket with ten pieces of delicious chicken, two larger sides, and four biscuits that feeds four to six. Or a KFC Party Bucket with 15 pieces of our chicken, three larger sides, and six biscuits that feed six. And we'll handle the dishes, plates and utensils included, so you can lick your fingers in peace. KFC knows value, and it's finger looking good. Refined style with elegant taste. The fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, the fine thread is your place. If you want to look suave and never near everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great? The fine threads is your place. Refined style with elegant taste. Then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. When you jump in your Japanese import and you turn the radio on, all you hear is... For the month of September, the hit spot will install a band extender in your Japanese import for the dis- $79.99, that included. Get your band expander installed today at the hit spot and listen to... Star 106.5. Plus, get fresh news and smart talk on... Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Are you tired of the same old 5K runs? Want something more? Then get ready for the Chick Charney Challenge City Run on September 28th, starting at Crypto Wild. Test your strength, stamina, and spirit. It takes all of you to dodge, climb, conquer obstacles as you race through the heart of the city. Lace up and get to the Chick Charney Challenge City Run. Register now on our website, chickcharneychurn.com, or on our social media pages. Brought to you by Kalina, Island Yogurt, Advantage Insurance, Art of Graphics, Crypto Wild, and Guardian Radio 96.9. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Oh, only on Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. They say the sun and it's shining for all. But they in some people world, you never shine at all. These roads of flames. 
lights are catching a fire. Sing my song, my song I've been on this road to way too long I've been hoping that we all get along These roads of flames are getting We're on. back at you on the Tuesday, September 17th edition of Talking Heads um, And Pearly is back with us, right? You got Pearly there? Or we lost Pearly? Pearly Pearl You got Pearly or you muting yourself? Pearly, you need to talk. You need to say something, man. Yeah. So, do we have the Pearl back in? I mean, I don't want to start it if we don't have him back in. All right. I think we dropped Pearly. I think Pearly got to, you know, pop back in. All right, never mind that, that video I just sent you. Don't worry about that. All right, so as we wait for Pearly to chime back in, let me remind you as we get close to the picks. Okay, that, that's fine. We're we going to get to this anyway. It's all good. <laughs> now, Pearly, you back? What happened? You got dropped, Pearly? What happened? Everything just dropped, and I know it ain't my internet because my IPTV running fine. Anyhow, it, it, it's all good. Listen, we I got was, you know, I understand. I, I was reading something that showed me that they're gonna, I think they're going to put two on the IR, which means he'll miss at least four uh, games. Yeah, four weeks actually, for two of them. Which, which actually means he's going to miss five because uh, bye week falls in the middle of that. Is this their way of, of ending the Tura era diplomatically? No, this is their way of making sure he's healthy if, if he's going to come back, that he's going to be completely healthy. There's no use bringing him back for him to get another, like they did the last time he gets another concussion, I think it's all about making sure that he's healthy and making sure that he is able to come back. If not, then they have to make a decision. All right. Now, really? I don't know. They, they, they got Huntley off the, off the practice squad in Baltimore, so let's see what they do with that. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly don't think that's the final move. I honestly believe that they're gonna they bring him this this week to make sure in case in case something happens to Skyler, they have him there, and then I think they'll make a decision probably going forward, maybe in a week or two. Tani Hilling. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not if it's not Tana Hill. All right, let's get to the phone lines real quick. Talking heads. Talking heads. Turn your radio down for me, please. Hey, who's in, Audie? Hey, what's going on, Skilla? You got a double whammy this week, eh? What do you mean double whammy? Well, it doesn't mean you just talk yesterday, Naughty. I know you don't have amnesia. Tell me about me, but what? What did I tell you yesterday? You tell me plenty yesterday. Okay, we're talking about my birthday. Oh, that's right. Right. When your Sorry, birthday is? Day. Your birthday is today. Buffalo on Friday. Oh, your birthday is today? Yeah. But happy birthday, Skiller. <laughs> From all of us to you. No, may may no, you I live to see many, many more. I get one. I get one. I get one birthday cake, right? So that get I read on that Friday, so I can be by Muff, so I can send your cake the same time. You send, send it, man. Send it down, man. I I enjoy it. MJ can enjoy it. It can be yeah, good. I can send you an MJ cake. I I, I appreciate uh, that. Uh huh. But I naughty. Let me ask you something, right? Pretty too, right? Now I was listening to uh, Joe Rose show, right? Oh, you 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 actually put up with Joe Rose? Huh? You actually could uh, stand no, that torture? Just listen to him because one or two. <laughs> Well, what he just be dealing with with his dolphin? No, Joe got it. No, Joe Rose got a good try. I'm making yeah, fun. Yeah, but I was listening to him, right? And one of these writers or readers, whatever they just call them, right? Now, what they were saying, I listened to what you and Boyle just say about Tula, right? But they were saying that uh, my man had a meeting, a press conference, uh, the coach. And what he was saying was that uh, Paul. For the thing, um, and uh, the concussion, concussion protocol. Con, right, the concussion protocol. Now, he say, 
stool is still working with the fellas, them and different things like that. But now, you see the fellow, what this is what they're trying to find out. The fellow, what they get from Baltimore, right? Honey. What they get him for? I think to, to, to learn the system and, and, and probably be the quarterback if they can't get a, a, a veteran like Tannehill in there. So, no, I, I honestly this, think this, that they sign him to be Skylar Thompson's backup for this week and maybe next. I think right. they'll take another Stop look Willie. at it. And, Willie, uh, that's exactly what they said. They said not to, he can be uh, Tyler to, uh, that way backup because my man, he's starting this week. Yeah. Now, I mostly believe... If he mess up in the first half, he can get pulled quick. I, I doubt it, seriously, and I'll tell you why. I don't think Huntley has enough time to learn to play. Uh, he got to learn the offense, but, but in a week or two, I mean, in two or three weeks, story. that's yeah, a different story. A pro, a pro yeah. And maybe even by next week, if, if Skyler looks bad, Huntley can slip right in there as the starting quarterback. That's so I, I, say, I wouldn't but, be surprised. Really, they say my man was a Pro Bowl player. Yeah. Played in the Pro Bowl. Who played in the Pro Bowl? Yeah. The same quarterback would they pick up from Baltimore? Ready, but yeah, as a backup, as an alternate, because other people didn't go the year that Lamar was injured. But didn't go. I forget who the person was. They yeah, the is it, yeah. All right, right. Let, let's tape it out a little bit. But yeah, yeah. Skiller, yeah. have a have a great birthday, Purdy, and I got to get to the picks, man. We'll talk again tomorrow. But have a great birthday, my brother. All right, Likewise, happy back. birthday, my brother. Appreciate you. All right, Pearly, we got to get to the picks, man. But before we do... Yeah, and, just, and just before we go, I want to say one little thing. Uh, let's do the picks, and that's before we end. I need 15 seconds. Okay, good. Let me remind everybody about the Island Game takedown, all right? It's the NFL takedown by the Island Game. Play a bet, single ticket, or parlay, and be ended to win with four drawings. September, 2000 up for grabs. October, 3000 up for grabs. November, 5000 up for grabs. December, the grand prize. All-expense-paid trip for two to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. It pays to play and win with the Island Game, and the Island Game always reminds you to play responsibly. All right, we're going to get to the games. We're going to get to the picks. Purdy, take your 15 seconds now. Go. No, I want to do it at the end. There's a reason why, and you'll understand when I say do it, okay? Oh, God. I, I, trust you know, me. Just trust me. Only because, anyway, it's better be good. Trust me. Uh, trust me. All right. Let's check out the games um, tonight. We're going WNBA. We got one, two, three, four, five big games in the WNBA. The Lynx on the road against the Connecticut Sun. They beat the Liberty. Did they beat the Sun? Um, Sun need to cover a point and a half at home. They at home. I like. I like. I like the Sun, but just about. I like the Sun. Ugh. The Lynx dangerous, I, but I gotta go with the Sun at home. I'll take that. I like the Sun, and I'll take the, the, the points. All right, the New York Liberty on the road against the Washington Mystics. They're ten and a half point favorites. I might take the Mystics in the ten and a half points. They've been playing competitive the last like, yeah. ten or twelve games. Um, the Liberty really don't have nothing to prove. They, they, I think they locked up the number one seed. Yeah, I'll just take the, close to the it. money line. I'll take the money so line. So take Liberty on the money line and maybe the over for sure because they've still been scoring a ton of points. The Sky plus nine on the road against the Atlanta Dream. I don't want to touch this game at all. Both these teams are Jekyll and Hyde right now. Injuries got both you know of them. I'll take the sky and the points because even without Angel Reese, without my girlfriend, they've really been playing tough basketball. I'll take the sky and the points. <clears throat> they've been getting beat, though, Pearly. <clears throat> yeah, that's all right. That's why I take them in the points. All right. We got the Aces on the road against the Seattle Storm. Eight and a half point favorites for the Aces Storm. I'll take the Aces in the money line, but I'm not touching the eight and a half on this. Me too. I agree. That, that too, that's too much. All right, two, four, one, two, three, four. All right, and the last game tonight, we got the, the Phoenix Mercury by three on the road against the Sparks. Listen, both teams injured re, injured right now. Both teams playing poorly. Still got to take the, the, the Mercury over the Sparks. Sparks are really bad right now. Okay, there you go. All right, there go your 15 seconds, Pearly. Okay, first of all, I just want to say shout out to uh, my son, my adopted son, Carl. Um, who list, he says he listens to us every day. Um, Freedom is a must call. But I want to take today out. My dad would have been 90 today. And I just okay. want to say that I, dedica I dedicated the show to him today. Happy birthday, daddy. Happy birthday, daddy. And heavenly, heavenly happy birthday. And I'm sure he's quite proud of you, Pearly. All right? We all are, but I'm sure Dolphin he is. Fan, so he, was a big Dolphin, he was a big Dolphin fan and a huge and a huge Marlin fan. He was a Pittsburgh Pirate, but moved to the Marlins when they got the team. So he's still wondering what happened to you in baseball. Oh, Lord. No, he knew I was a dodge. He knew I followed his brother. There you go. It's all good, man. Yeah. Your, your pops yeah, is man, quite man. a character through the, the community. 
especially in Chippenham, man. So, you know, he's greatly yeah. missed, but the legend lives on, my brother. The legend lives amen, on. Amen. I know, that's right. why I, 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 I joined you for a reason. I got plenty ways I could go with that. I can leave I that know, for another day. Right Anyhow, Let's we can leave that, right that on a sentimental note. We'll see you tomorrow okay. right here on Talking Heads, man. Y'all have a great Tuesday. Uh, be good, Bahamas. And if you can't be good, be good at it. We'll see you manana. Relax a little, friend. This won't take so long. And when you're feeling alone, you can come For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality, portable pricing, and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. Flavid Island Games, we making dreams come true. Flavid Island Games, we paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play we put in Bahamian's voice, guaranteed to pay. We like them other jokers. We've been here from the start. From the bike to computer. Island games. We can make your dreams come true. We play it with Island Games. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Why can't treat day be every day? Get the new KFC Value Box for only $9.95. Packed with one piece of your favorite fried chicken, cheesy mashed potatoes, three 100% real white meat nuggets, a buttery biscuit, a delicious dessert biscuit, and an ice cold 16 ounce soda. Name a crunchier deal. You can't. Order your new favorite deal online with Messenger or WhatsApp Hi to 557-3663 to start your KFC order today. KFC knows value, and it's finger licking good. Bahamas, are you ready? Keep the vibe alive. Music group, along with our for sales, present the best of the best. Raking, straight, explosion, real, or behemoth concert of the year. Featuring KB, D Mac, Abby, Mama D, Fan Shaw, Shine, 242, The Falcon, and more. Mark your calendars. It's going down November the 2nd at Super Club Braces Ground. Tickets now available at BahamasETickets.com. Or both Beauty Shack locations. Terminal admission $60. VIP Skybox and Sky Ponds also available. For more info, call 394-0819. Or email keep the vibe alive 242 at gmail.com. Experience the magic once again with more legends for one night only. Come party with us November 2nd and best of the best. Break and scrape explosion reloaded. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, only on Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. you blaming for this one, Saquon or Sirianni? It's unquestionably, unequivocally Nick Sirianni. I, and I, I'm, I don't want to hear, it was there. The scheme, the scheme didn't work. The reason you don't pass there is because drops happen. That's why, oh, fumbles happen too. There have been 60 drops in the league through two weeks. There have been 29 lost fumbles. But that it's worse than that because drops can only happen on passing plays. Fumbles can happen on literally every play. So you're about four times as likely to have a drop than a fumble. It is not the same risk. It is very simple what you do there. You run the ball on third down. If you don't pick it up, if we're really being smart, you run it on fourth down again. And by doing that, you guarantee your worst case scenario is you go to overtime. Let's just play on, you run. By doing that, let's say you fail, you fail. There is now 55 seconds. Atlanta is inside their own three. You're up three points. There is no world 
where that ends with them going 98 yards for a touchdown. Justin Jefferson's not walking through that door. If they get in field goal range, they're kicking a field goal. Instead, And by the way, how far from field goal range are they if they're inside their own five? About 60. Well, guess what? You then go, you did that, you gave them an extra 40 seconds, you then kicked it through the end zone, which makes them 70 from beating you. 60 from tying is your worst case scenario with, with 60 seconds left. Instead, you said, you know what? Let's make the worst case scenario 70 from losing with 100 seconds left. It's malfeasance. It's awful. It's indefensible. And it came from a coach who all day long mm. was seemingly spinning a wheel in his head on fourth down decisions. Early in the game, we're going for it. Middle of the game, we're a little conservative. Now we're going for it again. And then in the biggest decision of the night, after you made that pass call, you lost your medal. Go for it there and try to end the game there. And again, be in a situation where if Atlanta gets in field goal range, they're super conservative, they kick the field goal, and you're the better team going to overtime. You created the only world that could exist where you lose the game in regulation, and it's totally foreseeable. The moment they send out the field goal team, you said a minute 45 left, Kirk Cousins, they got to go 70 yards. You're not saying it's, they're a favorite, but it's like, oh, they could do this and just beat you. Four down territory the whole time. Yeah. That's bad coaching. So, yeah, it's Sirianni, not Saquon. I agree with a lot of what you said. I don't agree with you saying there's no world in which they march, what, 97 yards? In less than a minute with no timeouts? No, it, it could happen. I mean, a lot of people didn't think what happened would happen. Okay. So I agree they should have run. They were averaging five yards you a carry. You probably just won. Almost 200 yards rushing that all night. If you don't get it on the third down, do the tush push. Right. Which was working all night, of even course. with Jason Kelsey in the booth. Okay. That said, and you guys know, I love this guy. Oh, wow. Catch the football! I, Nick, you're right. They should have run. But catch the football. Saquon Barkley is a good receiver. I know he's had drops in CMC his career. CMC-esque. But he still is a very good receiver. The sure. first game against Green Bay made a great yeah. catch for a touchdown. This is a catch that Mo would make. This is a catch that Saquon would make 99 out of 100 times at least. You have got to catch the football. And Nick, yes, the probability of a fumble is not as great as a drop. But you need players to execute no matter what you call. You could call a run, and he could fumble. You could call the tush push, and they could mess up the snap. Like, stuff just happens. But this do and, and again, I'm not, Saquon was great all night. In exactly. fact, I was actually ready to come, and I'm thinking this during the game. I was like, oh, man, tomorrow I'm not only going on the show and saying, yeah, I told you he could be Christian McCaffrey. I would say he's been better than Christian McCaffrey until he dropped the football. And, and look, hopefully he can recover and it doesn't mess with him mentally. But, Nick, you got it. I agree. He, it's a bad drop. It. And if you but, catch it, we're not even – they win the game. But, in, but it's like in tennis, the difference between an unforced error and a forced error. Sirianni doesn't have guys chasing him. Sirianni doesn't have sweat on his hands. Sirianni is not, Sirianni's job is to put his team in the best position to win, and he didn't do it. Saquon throughout the night did his job and then in one spot screwed it up. Sirianni, 20 minutes prior, wasn't ripping off long runs. He was running down the sideline to make sure he got to celebrate with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson on camera after this big fourth down stop. He made sure to do that. There was there, This is bad coaching and this is indicative of a team that finds ways to grab losses from the jaws of victory. That, can we show you what they've been oh, since week 15 last year? The rest of the league, you're up in the final two minutes, you win 90% of the time. The Eagles win 40% of the time. That's, it, it, can't put that on Saquon. That's a coaching problem. And I don't, I just don't find one in a serious manner. And I didn't love, I'll add this, I don't know how you guys feel, them saying after the game, oh yeah, none of the coaches talked after. 
It was where they said that after the game, it was Jalen addressed the team and all that. No, you you know what coach needs to talk? Dan Campbell screwed up the clock at the end of the first half Mm -hmm. in his game. He's weeping at the podium saying, I cost my team the victory. I, your head coach cost your team the game. Sirianni's at the podium. If you're not talking to the players, evidently, because they're a player-run team, I- explaining himself like, well, th- they didn't have any timeouts, but with the incompletion, they did, and we thought making no sense. Like, that's... It, it, I, look, uh, you're making sense, but <laughs> let's not overcomplicate things. Yeah, run the ball. You got to catch the football. If he run, you can still fumble. I, you talked about sweat on his hands, being tired I, from it. Well, if sweat on his hands, maybe he fumbled the, the snap, but, the, the but, but don't. But one is so much more likely, more likely than the other. That's it, not likely. I, a two-yard reception by a good receiver, by a Pro Bowl running back, is not I, likely. Well, can, you uh, catch that ball. It was a weird. It was when I saw him rolling. I was like, "Oh, this is a weird play. This yes. is a weird decision." And the drop certainly seems now, in hindsight, like the wrong call. But he literally just got to the one on that play in the third quarter. It's the one that then they tush push in for the touchdown. I, it's well, there. It's right, open. That's how, exactly. It's a simple oh, oh, catch, like you said, a high school player can make. Before we before we move on, let's do your favorite thing, Raheem Morris, on the other sideline. I, yes. What is he going go, when they're about to snap the ball on third down? Is he hoping and praying? That, that this is a run ball. or a pass by Philly. You're probably right. Yeah. Raheem ball is in the air. You know what Raheem Morris it's, is saying? I, oh my we've God. lost. Yes. It's over. He's saying we've lost. Because Agreed. I expect Saquon uh, Barkley, we, a Pro Bowl receiver, we, to catch we, the ball. We all expect him to catch it. But you, your 98 percentile outcomes of running the football is your worst case, is it's fourth and five with a minute left and yep. you make a decision. Your, the outcome you the there, there are there, your one in ten chance of negative outcomes if you throw the ball is exactly that and that, and by, and so I these just, are professional players at yeah. the highest level you yeah. shouldn't play the game thinking they can't make no, plays but you should play the game thinking have we done enough to win if I don't screw it up as the coach can we just get on the bus with the win. Or they're at home. I guess there's no bus, but the, uh, the, can we just get the win? And they were there, yeah. and they created a scenario where instead of the worst-case scenario being we're going to overtime, a likely scenario was we lose in regulation. And I just think it's terrible coaching. All right, well, let's zoom out here about the Eagles, bro. Philly on the road against the undefeated, can't-be-stopped Saints next week. Your Eagles. Lost My se- Eagles? Well, yeah. Yeah. Who you declared? Pick, who'd I pick to win in FC? Just one, they're just one of your teams. One, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah. a team. You need a. Team. They're my Eagles, like the Cowboys or Knicks. Cowboys. Sure. Yeah. No okay, problem. Yeah, but you no need problem. a team in the NFC East, and yeah. they're not oh, your. And, and they're you, going and to uh, win the you NFC East. Famously yes. put on shades and declared something over. Yeah. Oh. So here's yeah. another. Here's another brew montage. Take a look. Oh really? <laughs> I told you. The funk is over. Disagree. Now, whether it's Saquon, it, it re- whether it's Saquon or something else, the funk's over. Okay, I thought we were gonna have more of that, but that's that's <laughs> is what it is. Brew, are you? Stand- I listened to the broadcast last night, and I heard Nick's favorite player, the center that can't be replaced, yes. the, the center who the tush push would vanish, not be successful anymore yeah. because he's not playing. Jason Kelsey. Mm-hmm. In the booth, say they exercised whatever the pro- exorcised yep, whatever yep. the problems were last year. So if you don't believe me, believe Jason, Jason. Kelsey. Did, did you feel like he was an unbiased observer? At Absolutely. That time? I think he's a crying. professional. I, I, no, I think I he's think, great. I think he did a great job. Outside of the green sweat no, okay, suit, yeah. suit, green yeah, suit yeah, as well. Uh, uh-huh. No, but and the, the skit funk, with Big I, I stand by. The funk is over. Okay. All right, the funk, that was not a funk last night. That was some coaching errors. Yep. That was a bad, a missed play by a great running back. And Vic Fangio, the defense, I thought, on that last drive wasn't good. Ooh. Their defense hadn't been playing. They have, they're, though. Could this have restarted it? Absolutely. Oh, whoa. 
Like, no, no, no. <laughs> that loss last night, that funk. type of loss could resurrect the funk. Uh -huh. So they are on. Going, I'm not funk saying watch? they're there yet. They're on funk watch. Okay. The, the Eagles are on funk watch. Right. And here's the thing about the uh -huh. funk. Okay. It's not just a loss mm -hmm. or a win. When they were 10 and 1, and every week it was like, what's wrong with the Eagles? And they're talking, man, we just don't. They were in the funk then. There was the supernatural yeah. funk, even though they were winning. Yeah. Okay? Can I? The funk is listlessness. The funk is lack of effort. Can, the ahead funk ahead. is lack of resiliency and fight. Can I? Low energy. That's what you should look for. And they got New Orleans and Tampa Bay coming up. We'll know in short order. Can I? Those are two teams they can beat, but those are two teams that could beat yeah. them. Let's watch the body language and yeah. how they play. I'm serious. They're on funk I, okay, watch. That's, but I, it, the funk is over. I surprise we'll you, Wilds. Okay. I think Brew is kind of right. That the supernatural funk is over. And the reason I say kind of right is because it never existed. How dare you? I can't, guys, it, there was never there was never some mythical thing. It's actually very simple. It was bad defense, quarterback turnovers, and poor coaching. That's what happened to the Eagles last year. So let's check in on the Eagles this year. How's the defense that was bottom five across the board last year? How is it this year? Well, it's bottom five across the board. The quarterback, who came in second in MVP voting by taking care of the football last year, was a turnover machine. This year, how is Jalen Hurts doing when it comes to turnovers? Well, you'll see, there we go. Oh, so last year is third most picks and fourth most turnovers. This year, early, third most picks, second most turnovers. Last year, we just dealt with the coaching. They, it, We called it a funk. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It's not confusing. They had a bad defense, and the quarterback gave the ball away. And they, they assigned it to, no, guys, nothing. We lost our spirit because our security guard, who is now starring in pregame skits on ESPN with Jason Kelsey, was banished for a week. And he's not allowed to have Sirianni's back because we're a serious organization. Don't worry, guys, our defense is fixed. Why? Well, we brought in two rookies to play corner and safety, one of whom has been quite good, the other of whom, when he got on the field last night, Troy Aikman was like, oh, first time all game. Oh, but don't worry, we're gonna sign Devin White to fix our linebackers, who was a healthy scratch yesterday. Oh, offensively, it was too much A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. We just stole Jahan Dotson. Oh, a former first round pick. Yesterday would have been a good time for him with I AJ agree. Brown out. Yeah. He had 25 routes run, one catch, six yards. There's not something, it's not confusing what happened with the Eagles. Bad defensive teams that are poorly coached, whose quarterback turns the ball over, lose, which is why they are now on two months of this list, which is the worst teams in football. Carolina's bench their quarterbacks are a disaster, I will admit it. The Washington drafted a quarterback number two, and Philly. It's not confusing, it's not supernatural. We don't need to call the exorcist. They're bad. They've been bad for half a season. They're not bad. But They're one in one. Uh, Wild, tell me We can't, we can't put all that stuff on a bar. It just has to be a supernatural <laughs> funk. You can't put a supernatural whole funk encompasses a lot of yeah, it's all, do, it's a, do we have a single piece there. of evidence that this is a good football team that's not from before last Thanksgiving? As Wilds tweeted, yeah, when the Jags actually lost. Actually, we do. What? One, they beat the Packers, who. That, and I'm not even talking about. I'm not even game. talking about me picking them to the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. Packers. Look like a good team, right? I, the end of last year, I don't know. They the playoffs. Barely, okay, sure. And we'll, you know, they I'm, I'm, that game was so weird. Okay. Well, bottom line, they won that game. Right. Yeah. So like, number they have two, a really good win. Like number the two, they should this. have. Now they lost, but they should have. We all know they should have won yesterday. <laughs> and I'm not defending Sirianni. So, but, all right, hold on. He right, should let's be, flip it. They should, should have lost week should, one, and they should have won yesterday. No, so no, they're still one and one. Okay, one and one, fine. Yeah. But Sirianni should be on the hot seat, and I agree with a lot of what you just said about his coaching. Yeah. But look, they were a four-win team when he took over. 
They've been in the playoffs for three years since, yeah. including a trip to the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts was a quarterback that many people thought would never even be a legit. Taylor starting. No, they're not questioning. They might be questioning, is he a star? But they're not questioning, can he be a no, starter? Because I thought he well, actually played it, well it, last night for the most and part. And he is skate. Listen, I thought he played really well because he was running the ball again, and that's, what makes, and that's what makes him special. But the other part of this that's kind of being lost in the their second to last possession is that last possession, they have the ball on their own 43 with an excellent kicker with a timeout. I agree. Down that was one. A bad play. Down yeah. one. What with 27 seconds? Wilds. They need. 14 yards to get to career long range, 20 yards for it to be, everyone in the, the uh, kickers in the league this year basically haven't missed 50 plus yarders except for Justin Tucker who's missed both of his. They need 20 yards in 27 seconds with a timeout Very and Hertz goes hero ball. Yeah, like that's weird. the other piece. I agree with that. I that thought he played really decision. well for 59 and a half minutes and then an in, in they inexplicable had a, a legitimate They could have stolen it back. Absolutely. They could have stolen it right back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.